Thanks for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin Smith. Tonight, South African firm BioVac partners with Pfizer and Biotech to produce their vaccine in South Africa for distribution on the content continent, excuse me. Now, it's a welcome deal for Africa, but pharma companies do continue to oppose vaccine patent waivers, which could vastly ramp up the pace of production. Also, Tunisia's military takes over running the coronavirus response after the health minister sacked and the country struggles with a spike in fatal infections that threatens to overwhelm hospitals. And Nama and Herrera communities in Namibia vow to keep pushing for more genocide reparations from Germany, despite the deaths of two key chiefs who had been leading negotiations. The loss has steeled their determination. But first, in an apparent breakthrough for, for Africa, a South African firm has struck a deal with Pfizer and Biotech to start producing around 100 million doses a year of their COVID-19 vaccine. The deal will see BioVax Cape Town facilities take on the final stages of manufacture of jabs for the African Union. But production is still at least a year away and the continent struggles to conti continues to struggle with access to vaccines as many nations battle a third wave of infections. Pharma companies have also been reluctant to waive vaccine patents, which could speed up the pace of vaccine production in poorer regions. Ensipeng Mutema tells me more about how much of a difference the Pfizer and Biotech and Biovac deal is likely to make to the continent. It is going to make a big difference eventually when production begins. This is now um, early next year. I suppose the good news really is that um, African countries or uh, citizens of the various countries um, can, you know, now rest assured that there actually um, is a vaccine that has been secured and will be coming to them. And this is because vaccinations have been pretty slow here on the African continent. Um, to people who have really suffered uh, from the pandemic from last year in 2020 and were hoping that this year is going to be a better year, but continue to struggle because of the economies in their countries that um, you know, are, are not doing well, particularly when there has to be lockdowns, that are regulations that are tightened in a number of countries to hear that a vaccine is coming. Only in uh, the beginning of next year is really going to be little comfort for people like that, because um, for a lot of people who've lost businesses, livelihoods, as far as, uh, as, as, as they're concerned, uh, they would really want to be vaccinated uh, as soon as today. Now, you alluded to it before, the, how, how slow the continent's vaccination push has been with regard to, uh, in comparison to, to richer regions. Um, but the pace has been picking up a bit in South Africa. Have we seen that reflected anywhere else on the continent? Here in South Africa, things have started pretty slow. Yes, there is an increase now, and the government has uh, said that they're going to be vaccinating up to 35 million people by the end of the year. But um, initially, they had said they would have vaccinated more than 40 um, million. This just shows that they, you know, it's been slow. And this, um, the slowness really is playing out in a lot of African countries. When you compare to countries in the you know, European Union or in America, that are vaccinating around 40%, 50% of their populations. Here on the African continent, we've only fully vaccinated 1.5 million, uh, um, sorry, 1.5% uh, uh, of, uh, of citizens. And this is, you know, because of a number of reasons. One that I would like to touch on is the distribution and administration of uh, vaccines. There is a lack of infrastructure, lack of health infrastructure. So you have vaccines that are not being distributed, are not reaching the people who really need them. Uh, even as Bi Pfizer and Biotech, though, struck this deal with BioVac, the company is also still trying to stop World Trade Organization members from supporting calls for a vaccine intellectual property rights waiver. Um, that's something that South Africa's really been spearheading. Uh, why do you think that the changing intellectual property rules for vaccines are proving to be quite so divisive? A number of countries that have opposed this have really used the um, explanation or excuse that it's going to hamper with their innovation or research um, uh, progress if they reveal all their, all their secrets. But uh, the criticism really has been that the country, uh, these countries have been looking out for themselves as far as their own economies, that they only care about vaccinating their own populations, getting their own economies 
um, back running while uh, developed countries are still waiting. Some are still on uh, lockdown and um, are, are really, even in a pandemic, the profits are being put ahead of people's lives, which is why countries like South Africa have been pushing, saying that let's just temporarily um, waiver uh, these um, IP rights and let us produce these vaccines and save our economies as well, save our populations as well. And Zipeng Motema there speaking to me a little earlier on. Now, the death toll from recent unrest in South Africa has risen to 276. Rioting spread through KwaZulu-Natal and Halting provinces earlier this month after ex-president Jacob Zuma began serving a 15-month sentence for contempt of court. Many victims lost their lives during stampedes during looting. 168 deaths, though, are being investigated as murders. The violence also stoked tensions between racially segregated communities. Some black South Africans say that they were unfairly and sometimes fatally targeted by armed vigilante groups. On Wednesday, 31-year-old Nyabulu Dlamini was buried by his family, who say that he was shot dead by a South African Indian squad manning a roadblock in Phoenix in KwaZulu-Natal. Now, Tunisia's military will take over the running of the national COVID-19 response in the face of one of the continent's worst resurgences of fatal coronavirus infections. Soldiers and military medics are already administering vaccines and army trucks transporting oxygen to overwhelmed hospitals. The health minister was replaced this week for opening vaccination centres to all adults during a busy religious holiday week. That led to huge gatherings at immunisation points, despite the government's desperate race to clamp down on super spreader events. The health system is already at breaking point and is taking all the help it can get. Our team reports. Il coûte 35 000 dinars. Il, mm. il a été financé par Ons Jaber. Ons Jaber is the first Arab woman to have made it to the quarterfinals at Wimbledon. She sold her tennis racket to raise money during Tunisia's COVID crisis. Aja Driss, a former pro basketball player, organized the auction. Hospital Mami, Abdrahman Mami, he was hospital. Meaning, he needs the frucheteria. So we're going to take him to the hospital Abdrahman Mami. Doctor, <laughs> المساهمة والهدية متاع أنس جابر هذه الإعانة جت في وقتها على خاطر إحنا ما زلنا في قلب الـ 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 البيك. In a suburb outside Tunis, we visit the charity Covidar, which means COVID Home in Arabic. It arranges for doctors and nurses to treat patients for free in their homes. الهدف نتاعها هو التكفل بالمرضى بصفه مبكره والتشخيص المبكر وهكاك نتجنبوا المضاعفات وكيف نتجنبوا المضاعفات نتجنبوا تنقل المرضى الكل الى الهياكل الصحيه والى اقسام الانعاش واقسام الاستعجال The charity is funded by private donations. حسام مدام تفضل كيفاش معاونك؟ It also provides a telephone hotline operated by volunteers like Amna who's just qualified as a doctor. Almost all of the patients who have contacted COVID are have avoided a stay in hospital. In Namibia, descendants of the victims of the first genocide of the 20th century are determined to keep pushing for more reparations from Germany, despite the COVID deaths of two traditional chiefs who had been spearheading negotiations. The Namibian government had accepted Berlin's offer this year of $1.3 billion as a gesture. But many, Nama and Herero, say that it is nowhere near enough for the slaughter of 80,000 of their people between 1904 and 1908.
Chief Rikoro's body left the capital, Vintuk, the night before his burial for a journey of more than 400 kilometers to the north. His people lined up on the road, called out to him, as if to wish him a safe journey into the afterlife. In the tradition of the Overherero, the remains returned to the village of their ancestors, where the hearse was welcomed by horsemen. Yes, he was a good chief. Because he bring the, the, the money from the Germans. Chief Rikoro fought for the recognition of the extermination of his people in the 1904 war against the Germans. In May this year, Berlin finally agreed to give over $1 billion to Namibia. Seven shots were fired in his honor. Very moved, the chief's brother sends the message that death will not change the determination of the over Herero. He just want to inform the nation that the fight for the, re for, the for the reparation of genocide, it will continue until the German government came back and knee and apologize to the people they genocided, not to the Namibian government. Chief Rikoro is now buried in the cemetery of his people's heroes. Before his death, he worried about the fact that the money from Germany was going to be handed over to the Namibian government. He believed it was corrupt. Like Rikoro, other negotiators also died of COVID. The agreement was never ratified. No one knows whether the Germans will indeed come to apologize like they did for the Holocaust. But for this historian, this is the only way for all communities to move on. Willy Brandt went to the Warsaw Ghetto in 1971 or 72 to lay a wreath and he spontaneously fell on his knees spontaneously. And that was the point where young Germans and young German speakers like me sort of finally were able to identify with being German. History is unfolding in Namibia. The road to reconciliation is a long one. Well, that's it for Iron Africa. Thanks for joining us and do so again if you can. Take care.